Hey everybody, this is the chapter five quiz access. This is problem number three. And so they want us to, well, they give us this information and then they want us to, using a periodic system, they want us to determine the cost assigned to the ending inventory for first in, using first in, first out, using last in, first out, and then to compute the gross profit for each method. So let's get started. So this is the Hemming Company. They have the following current year purchases and sales for its only product. That's nice, they only have one product. Um, and so we can get started. So our beginning inventory looks like was 270 units required at a, or acquired at a cost of $12.80. So I'm just gonna say 270 uh, acquired at, oh, I already forgot the amount. It was $12.80. Is a problem when you scroll and then you already have forgotten what you what you were looking at. Then we're going to record our purchases. So on March 14th, we had purchases of 400 or 400 units for 1780. July 30th, purchases of 470 at 2280. What the heck? All right, hold on. It was 400 units at $17.80. July 30th, 470 units at $22.80. So really, I mean, right now I'm just recording these purchases down here. So it almost seems too easy. Let's see, and, and then on October 26, we purchased 170 units at 2780. So we can see their costs are definitely going up. All right. So now we have to figure out our cost of goods sold and our ending inventory. So. When we made, let's see. So let's look at our sales. Um, if we're using a first in, first out method, and remember we're using periodic inventory system, which means we figure out the ones we sold at the end of the period, not as we go along, okay? That's, that's an important uh, differentiation. When we're using periodic, we're gonna just look at the end of the period and not uh, go along with you know, each sale saying, well, what, which units were there at the time. So we know, let's see, that they sold 1,000 units during this month or this month, this year, it looks like. Um, and so the question is, well, which units do we think that they sold, right? That's always kind of how it goes. And so our cost of goods sold, remember with a first in, first out, we're always gonna assume we sold all of the oldest units, okay? So I'm gonna assume if I sold a thousand units, it's going to be 270 of these units and another 400 of these units because these are the oldest units. Uh, that is adds up to 670. And remember, we sold a thousand. So I'm going to take 1000 minus 670. Is it 330? So I sold 330 of these units. So again, the idea is we're asking ourselves, okay, I know I sold a thousand units. I can see that right here. The question is, which thousand units did I sell? So using first in, first out, we would assume we sold the oldest ones first. So we sold all 270 of these and all 400 of these plus another 330 of these units, meaning we didn't sell any of the, the October 26 purchased units and didn't sell if it was a hundred and, or, or sorry, 
330 of these units. So we didn't sell 140 of these units. So then our ending inventory, I don't know if it wants us to put a zero in there or if it wants us, what it wants us to do. That's a good question. We'd say in the ending inventory, we don't have any of these units left. And we don't have any of these because we had 400 and we sold 400. We had 470 and sold 330. So we have 140 of these units remaining. And then we haven't sold any of these. So we have 170 of those units remaining. So I'm going to go ahead and do a check right now, use one of my checks to make sure I'm on the right track and to know if it wants these zeros or not. Looks like it was good with the zeros and it looks like everything is right. So I hope that makes sense. All we're doing is we're, we're in this first column. We're kind of recording all of our, what we had in the beginning, plus all of our purchases. In the second column, we're recording the units that we sold. And in the last column, we're recording the units that are remaining. Um, again, I think one of the things that confuses people a lot is the difference between a periodic inventory system and a perpetual system. So in a periodic system, we're not keeping track of our sales as we make them. And so what we do is we just have to go back at the end of the period. This was this period is a whole year. And we just have to say, okay, I had 1,310 units available for sale this year. And I sold 1,000 units during the year. And so I'm going to assume then my oldest or first in units are the first ones I sold. So then we just go back to the beginning and, and figure out which ones we sold. This is different than a perpetual inventory system where we're keeping track with each transaction. So, you know, we would say, oh, I had 270 units and I sold 220. Well, it must have been of these units because I wouldn't have had these yet. Um, and that's how we do it with a perpetual system. So we have to recalculate it each time we make a sale and then each time we make a purchase. So just recognize the difference. That becomes really important again on an exam you have to recognize, am I periodic in a periodic system or a perpetual system and adjust accordingly? So let's go ahead and do the second one. Uh, this one's using last in first out. So again, we have all our purchases here. That was nice. It carried it down for us, I guess. Um, but now we, I, we're going to assume that for our cost of goods sold, that we sold the newer units last in first out meaning the last ones we purchased the first ones out first ones sold so i'm going to say okay i sold all 170 of these uh october 26 purchases i'll go ahead and put that right here that's 170. oh i haven't returned to the question i was like why won't you let me click all right 170 and then We'll assume we sold all 470 of these. That's 475, 76, 40. Um, and then we sold another, enough to bring this up to 1,000, right? Because that's how many we sold. So that should be 360 of these units. And we sold zero from the beginning inventory. So again, which units we sell? Well, we're going to assume we sold these most recent units first. So there'll be zero of these left and zero of these left. We had 400 and sold 360. So there'll be 40 of these units left and all 270 of the beginning inventory units. All right. So that should give us our cost of goods sold and ending inventory. So now it wants us to figure out the gross profit Gross profit is just going to be our sales minus our cost of goods sold will give us our gross profit. Our sales looks like we sold all of the units for the same price, $42.80. 
So if I say, I could do the math in my head if I wanted, 1,000 times 4,280, $42,800. Bet you couldn't do that, but I bet y'all did. So 42,800. And then for our cost of goods sold, for first in, first out, we'll look right here, 18,110. And for our last in, first out, it was our cost of goods sold was 21,850. I thought it was going to calculate it for me. Oh, uh, well, I'll get my calculator out here. Oh, McGraw Hill, I can never figure out what you're, uh, what you're doing. So 42,800 minus 18,110 is 24,690. And then for last in, first out, I have 42,800 minus 21,850 is 20,950. And there we go. Let's check our work. Make sure I didn't make a mistake. Oh, oh something was wrong there. Oh, it's 18,100. That's why. So just made a mistake and bring it down. That's why we have check. What well, should be 24,700. Nice, all right. So there we are. That is problem number three, um, which was doing first in, first out and last in, first out under a periodic inventory system.